Hi yeah, Ron again. So we're going to do a full handover on this vehicle, which is the Chasson Flash 620. Uh, it's a new 2016 model. Um, so we'll go through it bit by bit, and I'll try and explain everything about it. So the first thing it would come up to is your gas locker, LPG, liquid petroleum gas, which obviously you'd use the key to open. We've just put a bottle in there just to give a demonstration of what it would look like with the eight gas bottle on. Six kilo gas bottle. So all you would need to do, it's a left hand thread. So tighten it up tight as you can by hand. Then turn the gas on. And then obviously then you'd have the gas coming to your appliances inside the vehicle. Uh, just before you leave site or leave home or where you happen to be, just turn the gas off from the top of the bottle. Um, and then that's everything safe. Okay, well I'm down here, may as well just quickly talk about just here is uh, an external shower point. Uh, when you purchase this vehicle you will get a, um, an external shower hose which just clips the net to bayonet fitting and it's about three meters long with a trigger on the end with a shower head so you can do your boots, your, your wellies, your bikes, the kids, the dogs, if you just come off the beach you know you've got sand or anything like that so you can pour an external shower. So we we'll just move along a wee bit, come to the next locker which is your WC or the cassette behind there. Your toilet's in there, that's where you do your business and this is where your business ends up. So if you're on site, there'll be a designated chemical toilet disposal. Usually it's behind the toilet block. Um, it'll be well signposted. Make sure that the trap door inside the cassette itself is closed. Then lift it up, take it out, just pulls out, put the wheels at the back, the extending handle, so you don't have to carry it anymore. Once you get to that designated area, lift it up, take the top off, then you pour the contents down the toilet or wherever the receptacle happens to be. Press that bright orange button, that will let a little bit of air in. Okay, stops the glug, glug, glug. And, and then you can rinse it out as many times as you want. Okay, a little bit of water in, rinse out, pour it away, do it once, 10 times, 100 times, doesn't make any difference. Then most important, you need your chemical. If you're going to use liquid chemical, you can use the cap as a guide. Okay, approximately a cap full of chemical. Pop that in. There is other chemical, uh, other products on the market, so you can use the tablets now, which you can just throw down the toilet itself. It does exactly the same thing. Once that's done, just leave about a half a litre of clean fresh water in there, and then just push the cassette back in, and then. So we now come to a wastewater or grey water, which is held in a separate holding tank, uh, strapped underneath the van. There's an indicator on the control panel, which indicates when the the uh, the tank is almost full or nearly full, about three quarters, and that's when you need to go if you're on site to the designated wastewater or grey water disposal. Uh, sometimes it's just a gully in the ground. It'll be well signposted, motorhome service area, so you just drive as closely as you can to it. As you can see the sign on the side of the van there, just underneath here is a lever, got the grey pipe there, just pull on the lever and then that will ditch all the water out of your wastewater tank. Once it's empty then you just close it off and then go back to your pitch. Most people tend to, what they attempt to do just before the leave site, they'll empty that grey tank and then go to the next destination. Okay we'll move to the rear of the vehicle, we've got a huge garage here. Okay, so we'll just open that up so you can see inside. Great piece of space, huge amount of space. So you can put all your deck chairs in, wind brakes, scooters, you know, if you have scooters or anything like that. Um, just on the side there, you've got a main socket, which is obviously live now because we're hooked up. Just above that, there's a 12 volt socket. Okay, so if you want some lighting or something like that. And obviously on the left side here, you can see that there's a small light, which gives you some illumination on the inside. You've also got access from the back, coming in, you, and you've also got a door at the back, so you have access from both sides. So we'll come to the hookup point, which is on, obviously on the side of the vehicle. So you have your, your hookup cable. So the only thing we advise you to do is hook your van first, and the light one of us, and then go to the power source and hook up that side as well. So obviously when just before you leave site you unhook from the power source and then really you want your cable in and then unhook from your van. So we'll go okay. to the Truma vent, your boiler's behind there. This will heat your water using mains, electric or gas. If you're on site and you're hooked up, you've paid your site fees, 
so you'd be mainly using the electric so you do not need to take this cover off but if you are wild camping or if you're not hooked up then you would have to use the gas side and then you must take this cover off to take the cover off all you need to do a little bit of pressure there and it just lifts off okay but you must take this cover off if you're going to heat your water using gas don't be afraid if you forget and the cover is still on when you switch it on after about 30 seconds it will sense that it's not getting an air flow and it will fail you'll get a light come on on the switch which we'll show you later okay and then to put the cover back on just before you leave site okay we're now inside the chasson uh, flash 620 and i'll quickly go through the control panel with you which you can see just in, in front there so you've got these buttons on the top here you've got the bright green one that's your on off switch so, so just press and hold when you leave the vehicle okay and everything switches off and then when you come back into the vehicle just switch on the next one is your lights all the down lights all the rest of the lights are individually switched the next one there is your for your pump so you need that on for the service your taps in your in the kitchen the washroom and your toilet flush and then the last one on the right is basically just your awning light outside then we just drop down to these bottom buttons we've got these little icons on the left side so the first one you've got an icon of a little caravan so if you press that it's the second one down you can see the light starting to light up all the way across as telling us that you have a fully charged leisure battery the next one down okay is the wagon so that's telling you about the engine battery which is telling us that you've got a fully charged engine battery then the next one along is for your water so you can imagine that's just a tank of your water there so obviously we're not carrying much water we've got a little bit in uh, maybe about 10 liters just to show on the on the scale and then finally the last one is just a dimmer switch for this control panel itself because obviously at night time this is quite bright so if you're in your bed you can turn it down a wee bit okay You've got two marker lights here. The bottom one is uh, with the green light on is just telling you that we're hooked up. And the top one will flash when you have low voltage or there's a fault in you know, one of the fuses has gone and that will flash or will light up red, okay? And then just to the left of the control panel is the Webasto heating system. It's quite simple, it works off diesel, okay? Um, and to switch on, literally just turn the dial got the green light on turn it all the way around to the right and that's on full power it takes a little while you'll hear it start to fire up it's very gentle at first and then as it warms up it gets more and more and then that will distribute the warm air through the vents uh, which are situated around the vehicle once the van is nice and warm and then you can turn the temperature down and obviously then it will switch itself on and off as we go you need about at least a quarter tank of diesel for to operate this particular system but don't be afraid you can't run out of diesel because the take the actual take for the heating system is higher than the take for the engine so um, what would happen is the heating would just switch off but you'd always have diesel in the tank to start your engine to go to, to get some more fuel and then obviously to switch off you just turn it anti-clockwise and that will switch it off so we've got these controls on the inside of the vehicle it's the Truma boiler EL which is obviously on the electric side so this is this one I've just got my thumb just above it so you've got two settings three wavy lines is the equivalent to two kilowatt in the middle is off and the top one is one kilowatt so basically it's just a little toggle switch it's off at the moment so you're on site you paid your site fees so if you wanted to heat your water using electric just switch on that's using two kilowatt if you're on a smaller site where there may be they're not as generous with their electricity you may have to turn it down a wee bit to one kilowatt which is the top setting once it reaches its temperature it's usually about 65 degrees it will automatically switch off once it cools it will sense it and then it will switch itself back on again so you've always got constant hot water in theory you could leave that switched on because once you unhook it would kill the switch and then once you've got your next destination you would hook up and then you would have um, hot water within about 25 minutes but for normal use you'd switch it off the one adjacent to or just behind it is if you're going to heat your water using gas it's two settings very similar to this one it's like on a toggle switch top one would heat your water up to 50 degrees 
you just heard a click in the background there so it's just switched itself on in the middle is off and the very bottom one is heating the water up to 70 degrees same principle once it reaches that temperature it, the boiler would sw switch itself off and and then the sensor would sense that it's cooled off and it will switch itself back on again okay as long as you've got your gas turned on but you must remember if you're using this switch you must take that cover off that we were talking about a few moments ago outside otherwise it will fail and you will get a red light showing on here and that will remind you that you've forgotten to take the cover off so we've done the control part the controls for the boiler which is just here and now the boiler is directly behind which you can see um, there's not much in there it's just a lot of pipe work and wiring so basically it's just access for the technicians I mean you can get into it if you need to but basically you never need to and directly in front of that you have three boxes okay the one on your left is your consumer unit with your contacts um, the middle one is your battery charger which is showing a red light which is now charging your leisure battery as we speak and the one on the right as you look at it is all your 12 volt fuses they're just ordinary 12 volt fuses you can go to Halfords and get a, you know one of those mixed bags of 10s and 5s and 25 amp fuses in an emergency okay and so about the it. boilers behind there and next we'll talk about the uh, yeah, winterization dump valve for the boiler which is most important so if you are not using your vehicle over the winter time usually I sort of say around about the Christmas time because most people tend to stay at home over Christmas you must protect the boiler against frost okay and to do that you would have to dump all the water out of it so just inside of the box there you can see a bright yellow toggle it's lying flat at the moment that's in the closed position so all you have to do is lift it up and then leave it up and then obviously the power would not be turned on or the pump and then all the water will drain out the boiler from underneath the van you just leave it in that position right over the winter time and and then you can open your taps in your washroom and in the kitchen and then once you come to use the vehicle again you would close all those taps put some water on board then go to your kitchen tap obviously you would close this in a like manner thus then you'd open the tap run it through the cold side first you would almost get instant water straight away because it comes directly from the tank then turn the tap to the hot side and then um, after a few minutes it will cough and splutter and make all sorts of strange noises and then once you get a free flow of water from the hot side that's when your boiler's full and that's when the system is primed thank you so now we've got the kitchen area as you can see it's quite cute uh, everything there you need so on the bottom there you have a cutlery drawer soft closing doors another wee cupboard underneath for whatever you want to put inside of there uh, on the top three burner hob okay so obviously when your gas is turned on they will work you will need a gas match or a gas lighter because there isn't an igniter with this particular model and then adjacent to that to the right side you have your taps and your stainless steel sink with a cover which you can use as a chopping board or as a drainer and then just underneath you have a main socket okay which is obviously live now because we're hooked up and then just below that you have your grill so you can do your toast in the morning this does have an igniter so you can have uh, you can have your toast or bacon or whatever you want to have for it. and then underneath there a wee cupboard for whatever you want to put in there also and then on the opposite side we have the fridge okay so what I'll do I'll switch it on the extreme left button just press and hold okay as you can see it's lit up now the fridge now as it happens it's as it stands it's running on mains electric and on full power so that's sort of like the lowest temperature or the coolest setting after a few seconds it does switch itself off obviously it tries to save power so to bring back so to change the power source if you want to go from either mains electric to battery or from battery to gas press and hold the button the middle button it starts to flash then you can use these side arrows so the first one you would come to is battery if you press it again you'd come to sorry if you press it again you'd come to gas and then press it again you go back to mains electric so for this experiment we'll just say we're going to go on to gas because we're, we're not hooked up so you'd set it at that then the temperature gauge starts to flash so now we use the up and down arrows or the side arrows to adjust the temperature one dobber there flashing is the warmest and then just increase 
to the coolest setting and if you're happy with that and then you press the middle button to set it so now the fridge is running on gas uh, at, at full power to bring it back onto mains electric or I just say we're going to start traveling so we need it on battery so we put it on set it on battery set the temperature we'll see halfway so now when you start your engine the fridge will get a 12 volt source it will keep your fridge chilled till you get to your next destination once you get to your next destination and then you hook up then you change that from battery so you press it and press and hold until it starts to flash then you can change it we'll skip the gas we're going to mains electric you're happy with that press the button we'll adjust the temperature when we need we may want to lower the temperature slightly so now that's a coldest setting and we're happy at that press the middle button so it's now running on mains electric at full power and that's it all right we're now back into the lounge area of the chasson 620 uh, as you can see we'll have two side benches or two side seats and the double forward facing seat with um forward facing seat belts this area does turn into a bed we drop down the table which is an electric uh, table uh, there's a switch at the side there which drops it down and then there's a combination of the cushions which makes it into either a day bed or a small double or a single across the width of the van okay we'll demonstrate that in a couple of seconds okay i'm now going to just drop the table down there's a key at the side of the van there so we'll just turn that you can hear it going down there's a lever in the corner here which you can move the table around so make sure it's central and once it goes down to its full position it will stop once it stops then we get the back rest lift that up push it forward sorry take this push it out first then drop this down one so we're now in the front area again so we've, we've turned the front lounge into the bed so you can have a single running straight across or a small double running straight down the middle obviously you have to turn the the passenger seat and the driver's seat in the reverse positions to make it into a full size double now we'll demonstrate the, the okay, we're back inside i'll demonstrate the the electric bed uh yeah control panel is just on the side so you have the key turned and then we just press the button and it comes all the way down okay you must have the the lower bed in that position it always stops there just so you can make sure that there's nobody above the bed um as you can tell the bed does slide forward so you have to have the bed towards you before the bed actually drops down so it must be pulled back this way towards you uh, that is the first position so then you would use the ladder hook it on there and then claim a board as i say if you had guests then that's the position the bed would be in if you are just a two of you or by yourself then you can take the bed all the way down uh, press the, bed, the button once more and you can take the bed all the way down and then you don't need the ladder okay um we go a little bit lower that position and then you can just push the bed forward so then you have access because now it's an island bed so both people have access on either side to use the loo or to go to the kitchen or an emergency you can exit the habitation door uh, to take it back up obviously make sure the bed is brought right back and then press the up button and then the bed will go back up into its position it takes a few seconds because obviously gravity helps on the way down as you can see in the top of the ceiling there you have a buckle it always stops in that position just in case you have any children up there or if you've left something up there just a safety feature so now you just press the button again and then now you can take it all the way back up and then once it's in the right at the top just put the buckle in and that locks it in place you must release that buckle before the bed can come down okay thank you